warm christian greetings to you all in the matchless name of our lord and savior jesus christ what is the new testament message what is the new covenant message to us this is the topic we intend to discuss in this video jesus started his ministry on this earth announcing the kingdom of god and its values his declarations are according to the practices of the region to proclaim a new nation or a new king Jesus came to restore the kingdom of God so he declared his inauguration and his principles and uh, values so Jesus announced in Matthew chapter 4 verse 17 from that time Jesus began to preach and to say repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand in mark uh, 115 we read this declaration as the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of god is at hand repent and believe in the gospel if we read uh, together these two verses it would be something like this it, the time has come to restore the kingdom of god so you have to repent and believe in the kingdom of god this is a simple message but it has deep spiritual mysteries so let us try to understand it in fact from the time of abraham jews were eagerly waiting for the establishment of the kingdom of god but the understanding of uh, of the spiritual mystery was different uh, with the abraham and the jews who lived during the time of jesus for abraham the kingdom of god is the city which has foundations whose builder and maker is god so he lived hopefully in the land of promises in a foreign country dwelling in tents with isaac and jacob the heirs with him of the same promise that means for abraham the kingdom of god is a spiritual kingdom but gradually the descendants of abraham lost this vision after abraham the israel went through many political and social disturbances they were attacked and conquered by the enemy gentile nations more than once they were taken as captives in the foreign lands gentile kings ruled over them many times they would could establish a safe and strong kingdom they would receive also the promise from god for an eternal kingdom but unfortunately what really happened is that the israel kingdom was divided into two after solomon the one israel nation became two one on the north and another on the south in 1722 bc the northern kingdom was conquered by the assyrians and the population deported to their nation still the jews did not give up their hope for an eternal kingdom but their understanding of it changed from the spiritual plane to physical reality and gradually the kingdom promised by god became a physical kingdom they interpreted the davidic covenant and all prophecies of their uh, prophets in such a way that a physical kingdom will be established on earth for them they believed that the kingdom of god will be established during some time in future for israelites on this earth kingdom of god is an earthly political kingdom giving final victory for jews over the gentile nations that was their belief and uh, hope but instead of establishing a kingdom for them they were conquered by the general enemies and they had to go to exile during the babylonian exile many pious jews realized that their sin is the reason for the defeat and exile their sins keep them away from the kingdom so they are repeatedly defeated by their enemies Uh, because of their sin against God so they prayed and taught for a spiritual revival to the jews who were earnestly hoping for the kingdom john the baptist and jesus said that finally the kingdom of god has arrived so they must repent and believe in the gospel in the announcement of john the baptist and jesus we have noticed three things or rather they announced the three things the kingdom of god which the jews have been waiting for has finally come so they should repent they should believe in the good news about the kingdom and live according to the values of the kingdom that means the central message is repent why should they repent because the kingdom has come this is the central message of the whole new testament the new testament message demands not only jews but us also 
to repent now let us try to understand what exactly the demand for uh, repent really means the root greek word for repent means to feel sorry or to feel regret for all the sinful past in our life we agree that we have committed sin in our life and we decide to give up those sins in our future life the same greek word also mean to think different from the past this meaning is very important repent is to think different from the past it is to think different from the past religious social and political life that we have been leading in the past as we know our thoughts produce words and actions our thoughts define our personality so when we think different from the past our words become different our action become different and our total personality changes we become a new person our old thoughts may not be so bad may not be so sinful but if they are not according to the value systems of the kingdom of god we have to think different that is repentance repentance goes beyond sins of the past it is a sharp turning back to the life that we have been leading so far and moving in the opposite direction to the kingdom of god the kingdom of god is in the opposite direction in a life after the repentance only the values of the kingdom matters our reasons for a good life according to the standards of this world is no longer valid what we feel about the good life that we have been leading does not matter anymore only the values of the kingdom of god matters that is repentance this is us the jews and the new testament covenants uh, uh, to repent but the crucial question is that from what the jews and ourselves have to repent what when we raise this question repentance becomes a difficult word to understand so let us try to understand the term from the teachings of jesus christ the first message we understand from the exhortation to repent is that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of god when john the baptist was baptizing repentant people in the river jordan some sadducees and pharisees also came to him for baptism but john refused to baptize them in matthew 3:8 he asked them therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance worthy means equal in value to repentance what did john mean we know very well that the jewish community was so proud about the descent from abraham they believed that because they were the children of flesh of abraham they need not repent to enter the kingdom of god kingdom is a covenant promise between abraham and um, god and the jews they are the true inheritors of it washing their body with the water was a ritual practice by the old testament believers no true repentance was necessary for the ritual but john's baptism was a baptism of repentance so john is asking them to repent and change their mindset to be simple john is telling them that a ritual of washing the body cannot cleanse them from their sins they must change their mindset that means kinship with abraham is not worthy of the kingdom nothing done in the flesh and no claim of flesh can inherit the kingdom of god not even the fact that they are circumcised is worthy of the kingdom the jews were all this they were children of flesh of abraham and circumcised and the pharisees had an outward religious life but they were still unworthy of the kingdom jesus also preached the same message in john chapter 8 we read a long speech by him jesus said to the pharisees that ye shall die in your sins many people who heard his preaching believed in him to those jews who believed he said and you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free the unbelieving jews did not like this statement they argued that we are abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage to anyone how can you say you will be made free the argument is that the jews are the children of 
flesh of Abraham and they need no repentance to inherit the covenant but what jesus was trying to tell them was that they may be the children of flesh of abraham they may be physical descendants of abraham they may be circumcised israel but that do not make them work to inherit the kingdom of god by their mindset and deeds they have become the children of devil that is why they are rejecting the gospel of the kingdom this is the meaning of what jesus said to them jews by claiming the kinship with abraham or by a physical act of circumcision or washing their body with water cannot inherit the kingdom of god the new covenant message is very simple is just says as that no flesh and blood can inherit the kingdom of god no good deeds no good name no fame nothing of this world and fresh can make us worthy of the kingdom we may be born in a religious family to born again parents we may have good standing with a local church our wife or husband may be a born again person we may be supporting many evangelists but all these are not worthy of the kingdom of god to inherit the kingdom we must repent turn around and move in the opposite direction we must give up the values of this world and accept the values of the kingdom this is the new covenant message of repentance the second message of repentance aims at the sadducees scribes and the pharisees these three groups rejected jesus as the messiah and opposed him to the crucifixion Jesus also opposed to them for their beliefs and works. So Jews were a group of Jews who had great influence among the people during the time. They were all rich people. They almost controlled the temple governance and uh, the Sanhedrin. The Sanhedrin was the supreme court of the Jews during the time. Though they showed much zeal for the religious life of the Jews, their life was corrupted, accumulating wealth was their sole aim temple and the rites and the rituals all were a way for them to increase their wealth that is why john the baptist called them brood of vipers jesus called them a wicked and adulterous generation in matthew 16:6 jesus warned his disciples against the evil doctrines of sadducees and uh, pharisees sadducees taught wrong doctrines their life was corrupted religion believes and the temple itself was a source to make money for them scribes were another influential religious group of jews during the time since people who knew to write and read were very few during the time scribes were involved in copying the old testament so in a sense they knew the old testament very well but they miserably failed to understand the spiritual mysteries in the scripture they failed to recognize jesus as the promised messiah the king the third major religious group of the time was the well known pharisees pharisees were generally common people the large majority of them were financially not rich only few poor temple priests joined them Though they were religious fanatics in physical appearance and observance of the law, they were hypocrites. Jesus decried their hypocrisy whenever he got an opportunity. It seems Jesus disliked hypocrites more than a sinner. A sinner has hope for salvation. A hypocrite has no hope for repentance. Pharisees were all self-deceiving hypocrites. they believed that they were holy and pious by their works in the flesh but they were so insincere in their heart so jesus called them serpents brood of vipers he advised them to repent because the kingdom of god has come what should these people repent from repent from their greed for financial wealth and using the temple for increasing their wealth they should give up wrong doctrines and accept the values of the kingdom they should live according to the kingdom principles they should realize that they are deceiving themselves by their outward appearance and actions of a pious life and should give up this self deceiving hypocrisy no outward appearance can enable them to inherit the kingdom give up 
turn around and move in the other direction towards the kingdom let me move to the last part of this message repentance is straining away from physical to the spiritual the new testament concept of blessings is directly opposed to the concept of the old testament for the old testament jews the kingdom of god was an earthly kingdom established to restore their earthly promised land and other promises but they failed to understand that all old testament promises and many of the prophecies have two planes of fulfillment they have a now and future conditions the now is the physical fulfillment and the future is the spiritual fulfillment this is not a difficult mystery to understand just look at abraham once again as we have already discussed in the same message all promises to abraham were physical he was promised a land descendants and blessings all these were physical and were fulfilled in this world during his time itself he inherited a land he begot a son and he died at the ripe age as a wealthy person but abraham knew that there is a spiritual fulfillment also for all these promises he understood that everything physical is only a type of the spiritual that is yet to come and he hopefully waited for it isaac and jacob also believed in the spiritual mystery and so all the forefathers this mystery is explained in hebrew chapter 11 the letter starts by saying that the elders obtained a good testimony by hopefully waiting for the things not seen that means the testimony is not what they have gained in this world but what they will inherit in future not the physical but the spiritual verse 9 and 10 says by faith he dealt in the land of promise as in a foreign country dealing in tents with Isaac and Jacob the heirs with him of the same promise for he waited for the city which has foundations whose builder and maker is god and verse 13 says these all died in faith not having received the promises but having seen them afar off were assured of them embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth verse 16 but now they deserve a better that is a heavenly country therefore god is not ashamed to be called their god for he has prepared a city for them and the last two verses of the chapter sums up the whole argument in this way verse 39 and 40 and all these having obtained a good testimony through faith they did not receive the promise god having provided something better for us that they should not be made perfect apart from us The meaning of these verses is very simple the great patriarchs like Abraham Isaac and Jacob inherited great physical and material wealth during their life in this world but they did not receive the promise they were not made perfect that simply means that the physical and material blessings are not the promise and the perfection promised to them Now Jesus is exhorting the Jews and all the New Testament believers to understand this spiritual mystery and repent to turn around and walk in the opposite in the other direction. Turn around from the physical and material blessings and walk towards the spiritual kingdom and the spiritual blessings. This is the New Testament message. Here Jesus is asking them to repent, repent from focusing on the physical and the material and turn around to focus on the spiritual city. that will be built by god jesus is asking for a change of their mindset the sermon on the mount spoken by jesus is recorded in matthew chapter 5 to 7 this sermon is a manifesto of the kingdom of god in other words the sermon on the mount is the declaration of the principles and the values of the kingdom so jesus announces an important value of the kingdom in chapter 6 verse 33 34 but seek first the kingdom of god and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you therefore do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about its own things sufficient for the day is its own trouble that means god knows that we need food clothes and houses and he is faithful to supply it what jesus asks us is to seek 
first the kingdom of god he is asking for a change in our priority a change in our mindset it is high time to forget the physical and material and to seek intensely the spiritual kingdom of god because the kingdom of god has come so repent turn around and move in the other direction this is the pure new testament message let me cut short the message here your feedback is welcome may god bless you all amen